Yeah, yeah. And then like what the mysterious part of that that like that that immediately brings up for me is like what's the like what is this capacity that I have where I'm able to hear the lacking of something? How can I hear silence being conditioned? Yeah. And then like doing that circling with people, it's that same thing. It's like yeah. like you you catch catch hints of the of that silence that's surrounding the conversation that's yeah. inside of that that structuring and yeah yeah what, like yeah. like what is it in me that's connecting to that yeah that's totally yeah because it's I something that. about that like how I really appreciate what you're what you're what you're pointing to there is is that um yeah, how the hell? How the hell do we notice something? Mi- like, how the hell do we notice a missing? Yeah, like in something lacking in something else. This kind of, this um, this. Well, I think you know it's funny. I say, as we're talking about this, I feel ourselves in the orbit to the thing that we were just questioning. Thank you for tuning in to Circling Dialogos and my wonderful conversation with Cody Pond. So this is my first conversation with Cody and Cody had contacted me because he wanted to talk with me about um, a practice that he had developed and was working on with with uh, John Verveke and Christopher Massipietro. Um, and some other things and so we scheduled a time to talk and connect about that and the conversation just blossomed into all the <laughs> all the things discussing essentially what was the most difficult thing to put into words yet in some way spoke to us as being the most real and i found cody to be an oh, uh, extraordinary young man and um, deeply reflective and deeply applying, I would say, um, in a very rich way, many of the things he has gotten through listening to the, the dialectic and the dialogue ghost kinds of conversations, right? You can really you can feel him having you know, it, it really speaking to him and him, him really, really uh, being affected by it and living it. And in particularly for some context, so he, he lives in Flagstaff and he works at a treatment center in Sedona that I think it's a kind of a longer term treatment center where people come in to get off of, you know, like a psychiatric medication or you know, I don't know, maybe opiates or different kinds of things like that. And, and although he's not a therapist or a counselor, that's not his role. Um, he has found himself being asked by many of the, of the patients there to go on these walks in the redwoods at night underneath the stars. And it's, it's his experience of that, right, over the course of time since he's been working there, that is so pregnant um, with much of the things that we discuss and point to in the conversations um, that you're familiar with on this channel. And uh, so it's just a really, it was just a delightful and soulful talk, and um, I really appreciated the conversation, and, and I hope I hope you enjoyed as well. Uh, some announcements. So we have a dialectic. Um, so we have a circling into dialogos course, live course coming up um, in a few weeks with John Verveke and Christopher Masapietro uh, and Karena and myself, who will be teaching it. Um, there is a a I believe it's like a hundred dollar discount to up to two weeks prior to the course starting. Links for everything for that is below. 
Um, if you want to participate in, in circling, we have an open an open evening uh, every Thursday. Um, everything's on Zoom. Uh, we have weekend intensives, and we have are just about ready to open enrollment for the next Art of Circling, which is the year-long practitioner training. So many ways to get involved and participate um, in, t in you know, and enact many of the things in fellowship that we discuss here. Uh, and also, if you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, go ahead and email me and let me know. And I'll get back with you. All right. Enjoy the conversation. Yeah, so I'll just give I'll give some pretext in the beginning. We can just keep keep going. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So um, my friend and I we started this meditative practice together, where we would uh, intentionally just sink into our depths as much as we possibly could, mm. and like listening to those voices and like feeling the currents that were kind of coming up from from our being. And there was a day like a year and a half into that practice where like I was, I was sitting down and the feeling that I had was that I was at the bottom of the ocean. Like I was sitting on the ground there at the bottom and I was feeling these waves and these currents. And then that thought came back through my mind, the what if you could view the world as a thou? And at that point, it felt like the ground like cracked up, cracked underneath me. And then I was just floating again. And then I looked down to these into this new depth and mm -hmm. I couldn't see a bottom and it was dark, but I could feel these, the, these like deep currents rising up from out of it. Mm -hmm. And it was such a spooky experience, but mm -hmm. like beautifully spooky. Yeah. And yeah, ever since then, there's been this, this great deepening to just how I walk through life yeah. and how I experience life. Yeah. And the only moments that I've really felt um, that same feeling coming from others is, has been listening to the dialogos that you've done with others and like reading through and like listening to you guys go through those Duino elegies. Yeah. It, like, it brought something about that back up. It's those, those same ripples and those same currents. Yeah. Kind of floating around. And so, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know what the question I'm hoping to ask you is, but it's in, it's in that space somewhere. Yeah, that that you know, it's funny. What what I think is interesting because I haven't heard anyone listen to those. I haven't even uploaded them on my channel yet. Of those uh, of us going through those Duane eulogies, um, they're so enigmatic, right? Like, so I was wondering if anybody could even like comprehend right what was happening. So just to hear, first of all, just to hear that somebody is listening to them and like. But also that you're hearing this, there's something intimated in those eulogies that is so difficult to put into words. But whatever it is, I was reading those eulogies like every day obsessively it, right in the beginning of circling. And for me, circling is really, the more I come to see it, it's really like, in some sense, you could, you know, you can, you could call it a, like a, a, a practice of whatever, whatever the word listening is pointing to, right? Mm. In this deep sense, because there's something about, there's something that I don't know if Rilke hears, if he's something that's intimated, but whatever it is. Um, it does feel like, it does feel like he's, it does feel like he's something about those, those eulogies is a listening, right? Mm -hmm. And, and I, and I, I think there's something about the, the walk that you go on, right? That starts to outline it like, it's, it's like, the, it's this, this circumambulation, right? Going around where in some sense, it's like, you know, as you're circling around, you're doing this other hermet hermetic circle that like you're kind of what if you imagine like walking in a <laughs> in a circle. Right. And and then then you kind of look up at some point and you, you, you notice that you haven't noticed that you've been circling around something and tracing it out. Right. 
Mm. And it's like this kind of thing, it's emerging. And you notice that you hadn't noticed it. But then when you notice it, you recall that in some sense, you were constituted by it the whole time, right? But whatever this thing that's circling around, like this kind, and I like the word circumambulation because it implies this, it implies this, um, this participatory experiential, like immersiveness in something that yeah. in some sense requires your lack of awareness of it. Right. Mm -hmm. But then the recalling of it from what you don't, you weren't aware of, right. In some sense, but also this way where you can't actually, it never becomes something that you can just totally represent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the feeling that I've been, I, cause I've been feeling that same thing. There's like, there's a like a, a locality to it almost where like there's specific places that I've been in the last year. Like I was at, I was at Bryce Canyon just a couple months ago mm -hmm. and there was something about being there where the, like that, the remembrance of going through and doing that, that circling process of like the, the realizing that you've been working around something for the past year yeah. and then the intonations of what that thing was, it's, yeah. it comes more strongly. And then like, along with that is this feeling of like, it's, it's a feeling that's akin to memory, but it feels yeah like it's not quite in linear time in the way that, yeah. that we are. Yeah. And it's like, it's recurring and it's, it feels like it's coming back, but it's projecting out. And like, <laughs> it's like, you can almost see your future self remembering actively a moment that you're in now and yeah feeling those memories kind of circle in that way. And yeah, totally. Yeah, you know, you talked been... earlier, you talked earlier just about um, for people listening that, that you, you, you work at a, um, what is it? A treatment center in Sedona, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and although you don't, you're not officially a counselor or a therapist, however, you essentially get the opportunity to just go on these long walks with people right mm -hmm. and listen to them and and i'm curious about that part right and you know you also talked about this experience of like listening in, in some sense what i heard you say is in, in 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 this experience you've in some sense awakened this whatever it is that listening points to right um Absolutely. and along with that have been listening to like um, a lot of the videos like on my channel and Daniel's channel and John's and stuff like that, where, where the initial dialogos is like, like things about the world being a thou, right. Really opened some things up for you. And so this has been, you know, I, I think I say this because I want to presence that what we're talking about is something that is not just abstract, right. But it's something that you've kind of been enduring and kind of living through and finding yourself in the midst of you know in some way and it's funny like thinking about this with the backdrop of the of the red rocks and sedona and <laughs> you going on these walks there's something so appropriate about it yeah it's been it's been a really cool experience because i think i i was listening to uh to you and john and chris and you know like all of the everybody in that little corner of the internet uh yeah, like i yeah. was listening to you guys and then because of that i was able to find this you know this very cool job where i get to spend time with people that are going through and you know just doing so much self-betterment like they're they're all there because they really want to be there and they have these active goals that they're working on yeah. um but like in the process of getting to go and actually practice that listening with them it's it's deepened my own listening not just with myself, but like with myself and the world as it shows up to me. Yeah. And it's been, it's been really beautiful because like in listening to all of these people, like just in going over, like they'll go over and they'll share their, their life stories with me. And they'll, they'll talk about these, you know, these deep anxieties and fears that they've, that they've been having. And, things that they'll say, like, they don't want to, they don't even want to talk about their therapist with, but just something about holding that space and being in it with them. They feel comfortable sharing mm. it. 
And that's been, that's been so cool. It's been, it's been sacred, I think is the, yeah, the best word for it, where it feels like I'm getting to participate in something special. Yeah. But it's, it's not because like I'm doing anything. Yeah. It feels more, I'm, I'm being there and I'm just asking the questions that feel right in the moment. And I might try to like draw something forward just from, just yeah. from curiosity, but it's never like, like a polling, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's kind of like, is it, is it kind of like you're finding yourself there with them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm emptying myself out. And in that process, I'm finding more of myself. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm curious, I'm curious about this sense of when you say, um, you know, when you said they, they want to talk with you about things that they don't even want to talk to the therapist about. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and that there's something, you know, and in, in, in some sense, I get this picture of both of you are participating in something, right? That mm. is somehow, um, somehow in the, like the, the world of the therapist, right? Whatever that world is, right? Isn't, um, isn't shared there. Or does it make sense to share it there in some sense, right? Because there's something you guys are sharing here, right? Mm -hmm. Finding yourself in the midst of draws out certain certain curiosities in you and draws out things to share in them. Curious about this. If that if that's a, an okay way of putting it, what is what are you guys sharing it? What is oh, what that, that is? You're doing you're doing this, and that's that's what it that's what it feels like for sure. Because the like the walks that we go on, it's it's one big loop that we do together. Yeah, and we might do the loop a couple of times, and so there's like we're we're circling in in that sense, and then we're you know like we are in Sedona, and so there's the like you said, there's the the red rocks all around us, and we're like we're walking around in something. Yeah, and we tend to do it you know later in the evening, and so like you know it's it's Sedona at night when all the stars are out and it's just obscenely gorgeous. And the, like the sky and the Milky Way is just like, it's like, we're inside of this intensely beautiful space. Yeah. And then like we, we start walking and then like, I'm never like in that conversation, like I'm never trying to be like, Hey, why don't you tell me about your family trauma? It's, it's never like that. It's like, Hey, what, is, like, what have you been feeling? What's been like, what's been going on in your world? Yeah. And then they'll start talking and then, you know, just like, I'm asking those questions. Like you said that, you know, like, it's just whatever my curiosity is following and we keep going down that. And it's, it's really interesting. Cause like, I'll see these people, like, as we're walking, they'll uh, like start to open up and show like a little bit of vulnerability yeah. And I'll just be there with them and then they'll close it off really quick and then we'll walk and we'll keep on whatever the, the lighter subject of conversation is. And then they'll do that again a little bit more and then they close back off and then we keep going. And every single time we do that, they like, they open more and more. And it's like, it's almost as if like they're, they're acclimating to like being with somebody that actually wants to listen to them. Yeah. And has the time and is willing to, you know, keep going on that walk for as long as they need. Yeah. Until at the end, eventually they start to just share for whatever has been going on in their soul. And it's, you know, sometimes it's autobiographical, like here's all these things that happened to me and I haven't been telling anybody. Yeah. But sometimes it's like, I have this, this thing in my soul that I don't know how to express. And like, I was looking for somebody to, like I was looking for somebody to share that with and I couldn't get that in, in this other context, even the other context is certainly helpful if, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I, I, and I really appreciate the way that you, you know, that, you know, it's funny because there's something about the way that you're describing the, the walking around, right and the around of the rocks and the around of the path, right? And also this, 
Arizona skies. Like there is nothing like the night sky of Arizona. I've been on like top of like the peak of the Rocky mountains, like with no moon. And it's like, it's not comparable to the skies in Arizona. I don't know what it is about the skies in Arizona, but they're just, they're almost, it's almost too much. Aren't they? Yeah, it was, that was the um, fun side note. That was the first date my wife and I went on was I yeah. took her star casing up by, um, by Mormon Lake up in Flagstaff. And yeah, totally. Yeah, it was the perfect night. And we just sat and we were like, whoa, for, yeah. for a couple yeah. of hours. And that's something that I always get to do. It's amazing. Yeah. If your first date is underneath that kind of, underneath that sky and that, in that way, you're, you're sealed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's destiny. Right. With that. <laughs> but, the, but, and, and there's this kind of, so, so, so there's, there's a way that you're, the way that you're um, articulating this and, and, and have been tracking this is really interesting. Like, cause what I'm hearing is on one level, you've been hearing people disclose content about themselves, right. And about what they want to talk about. Right. But there's, there's, and, and, and I really like the thing that you're saying is like, maybe as you're walking and which is, which is really interesting about walking, right? There's some deep connection between walking and thought that is mm. like, like all, like, it's funny, all thinkers and writers and they all walk, they all have a walking practice. Like, you know, they all did. Yeah. They, and there's something about that. Like there's, there's something about like, you know, if you're, you know, you know, my, my, if I'm all fucked up about something and I'm being an asshole to my wife or something like that, and she'll be, you, you, you need to go take a walk. Right. Like, <laughs> and it's, it's like, everyone knows exactly what that means somehow, but like, why, what is this about walking and thought? There's something about this kind of tempo and cadence, right. Mm. And I don't know the passing of things and the going forward that seems to enable this unity of thought and that motion, right? So just this, just this, just this, um, this coversing and this walking, right? And these, re these, these circles mm -hmm. and these repeated patterns and the openness of the sky. All of this kind of is coming together in your speaking when you say. Yeah, they open up. It's a little bit at first, and then mm. we walk some more. And then they open up a little bit more, and they walk some more. Open up a little mm. bit more, and they walk some more. And I could imagine just doing this, you know, over and over and over again with different people that, like, I can hear in your speaking, you're hearing of not just what they said, but mm. but the 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 emerging and structuring of whatever that you start to hear whatever structuring that cadence and that emergent right mm -hmm. you're starting to like i can i can hear the outlines of this other thing that you're hearing right as they're talking as, yeah. about the content right in some way yeah and it's not it's that that's the thing yeah it's and it's not constrained to one particular person it's yeah something about the combination of doing it with so many people and going on that same walk and going through that same expansion and contraction <clears throat> process with them. It's like, there's whatever that new thing is yeah. that shows up like in the process of just moving around in that circle, it's yeah. you walk around and you're like, Oh, this is, there's, there's a structure to whatever it is that we're inside of. Yeah. And it's like, you start to hear the structure. Yeah. Which, deep, which isn't just like, I don't want to say that in a way that makes it sound like I'm listening to that while I'm talking to people because I'm very much but, with but them. That, yeah, this thing that you're talking about, like I, let's let's kind of mi mind this for a moment and I'm going to close the door because my baby just woke up. Hang on. Okay. My wife is doing this strange new thing where the where the baby when it, the baby starts screaming my wife just matches her and so they then the, the baby like screams louder and the my wife matches 
just and it just goes like that so i had to, I had to shut the door <laughs> i don't know what i think about this new practice <laughs> it's, it's, it's very there. interesting yeah it's funny though <laughs> <laughs> but this yeah i just want to hold open that mm. that I, I don't even call it like a tension or a tone off, but this overhearing, right? Mm -hmm. And you said something specifically. I don't want to make you said you said I don't want to give the impression that I'm I'm listening to what they're saying and also turning away somehow and listening to this. It's not that, right? It's there. Whatever this thing is, is in that moment with them. Yeah, and it's like you get like it's like you make note of it like as it's happening. You're like, oh, that's there's that thing again. Yeah, and then on the drive on the drive back home to Flagstaff, I'll be like, I'll be going over and thinking about whatever that thing is, and yeah, and it somehow it it seems somehow in order for it to be that thing, it somehow can't be a thing, right? Mm -hmm. That we can, it, it it if it was, it wouldn't be that thing, right? It's like. Um, it's that thing by virtue that it's not one of the content that we're talking about, right? And it's not the thing representable. And I get this, I think I'm projecting, I'm projecting my own experience of something like that, of like, it's more like a hinting. It hints, you overhear it, but you never actually hear what it says. You just, you, you, it's some, it's something like whatever it is that's you know it's more like it's not it's not so much like a structure a structure it's a structuring right mm, yeah and there's a there, there's a definite eros to it or it's like uh, it's almost reflect like in that like you're you're walking towards something but you're also walking around something so you're like being pulled towards this thing that you're already somehow inside of yeah there's that always alreadiness and like yes while you were saying that it reminded me of the um heidegger and the on the way to language where yeah you know even that student there's they they spend like half that book like talking like not talking about a thing that they're inside of yeah yeah like not directly, not directly like talking about it but like it's it's always yeah. there and you're always like you, you catch it out of the corner of your eye like you like barely hear it like in the background yeah. of whatever the song of the moment is yeah and then yeah. yeah and trying to foreground that is totally i don't know in fact in, in fact it's was it it's a count kooky or whatever his whatever yeah. his, his name was in the thing he says yes we younger students demanded demanded of our of our teacher right much too harshly the need for explanation Right. Mm. And and then he kind of goes on and says, like, yeah, we Japanese understand it's I used to be able to quote this, but we Japanese understand that um that not only not only do we demand that things be definable, but that we actually in the course of the dialogue restore it back to the keeping of the undefinable. Mm. It's, it's got this, this thing that you're overhearing, but yet somehow finding yourself already always in. Mm. Like, so at some sense, you're already, you find yourself belonging in it, right? In mm. some way. Yet it withdraws from any, anything that you can clutch onto. It's like, it, it, it's something about this. And, and I think, this is why I've 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 been one I've been sitting in the the this question about like for I don't know thirty years of like what is listening and why listening right why not seeing right they're 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 saying something they're they're saying two different things but as we're talking I'm starting to get the sense like somehow all of this like it seems like you can only hear it. Yeah, yeah. The 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 it's funny because like there, there's a mental image that that popped up with that, and it's this, um, 
it's this this thing that keeps popping up in, in my life but it's the it's the taurus you know it's the it's the donut and yeah. you know you're walking around inside of the donut and there's you know like you're constantly encircled if you're walking inside of the donut you're constantly encircled yeah and you're moving around but there's always like that that corner that's yeah. just up ahead and then there's always like a corner behind you that's that leads off so there's like a place that you can't remember here and there's something you can't quite see yeah up there yeah and like but adding in that like the listening part of it it's like there's whatever's around that corner it's like you can't like you're never going to be able to catch sight of it until you actually get to it mm. but in the meantime you can hear it it's yeah. there's something reverberating off the walls that's coming back to you yes and there's it's from the past and the future. It almost feels like it's, yeah. there's like, like a future memory and like a past, like a past yeah. projecting back up to you. And yeah, I don't know that feels. Yeah. Yeah. There's something that pro tension retention, like, but the thing that you're like the way, a way sound is evanescent, right? Mm -hmm. The way that Herschler talks about that sense of like to listen to music, right? You, you, like trying to, Try to sitting like sit sit down one time and just try to listen to a song and try to understand how you how you hear it as a song. It's just absolutely mind boggling, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you add in like on top of that, like Jordan Hall one time was like, "What if you listen to to music in a way where you're paying more attention to the empty space between the notes and the notes themselves?" And yes. it's then the whole thing just like collapses in on itself, and you're yeah, yeah. Well, to, in some way, in some way, this this harkens to something that um, I think Yo Yo Moss talks about with music, which is who is that? Yo Yo Moss is like he's a he's a famous oh, yeah. you know famous composer. Um, and uh, I believe his main thing is cello playing. He's cello, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he says that that the the notes of the music always point back to that betweenness mm -hmm. that in some sense and i don't know if i'm getting this right but in some sense he's saying that the tone is ringing in a new way the the space the the silence right it's conditioning in some way the silence it's making the silence ring so what you're actually hearing is this is this thing that isn't ever a sound yet mm -hmm. somehow it um it withdraws in the sound, but also it, it it's like it shines forth in the sound yet recedes, recedes in the silence. And there's something about this, that thing that is affords you hearing music and not just a tone, right? Like an atomistic sound. Yeah. Yeah. And then like what the mysterious part of that, that like that that immediately brings up for me is like what's the like what is this capacity that I have where I'm able to hear the lacking of something? How can I hear silence being conditioned? Yeah. And then like doing that circling with people, it's that same thing. It's like yeah. like you you catch catch hints of the of that silence that's surrounding the conversation yeah. that's inside of that that structuring. And yeah, yeah. What, like yeah. Like what is it in me that's connecting to that? Yeah, yeah it's totally. Yeah, because it's something that about that. that. Like how I really appreciate what you're what you're what you're pointing to there is is that um yeah, how the hell how the hell do we notice something like how the hell do we notice a missing? Yeah. Like in something lacking in something else, this kind of this um this well i think you know it's funny as, as we're talking about this i feel ourselves in the orbit to the thing that we were just questioning right yeah like this thing we overhear that never is one of the things in fact it's eluding all of our words right in some mm -hmm. way yet in some way all of our words are hopefully drawing it drawing it forward right in some in in some way right this kind of concealing, unconcealing through concealment thing going on here. And it's like every time there's like, there's like, there's a spiraling to it where like yeah. you, 
like you you deepen into whatever that thing is every like every time every pass you make in that circle you 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 deepen into it yeah. and but it's like it's not a deepening in the sense that things are contracting it's like you're deepening in the sense that there's that there's greater levels of it and so you have to spend like more time sitting inside of whatever this next bigger thing is and then you like you catch the edges of it and then but like in the catching of the edges of it it's it's expanded back out and you can never it's always drawing you forwards but you can never quite fill it yeah and what yeah. something you said there just too i struck me of and what it's 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 needful of more time yeah like there see it seems something just mm. in the structure of the of of your speech so it, it it kind of harkens to this being deeply bound up with time in some way absolutely absolutely that's been the you know the one of the questions in the back of my mind for the past like for the past couple of years it's like what what's going on with time yeah and yeah the the closest i've been able to to think towards it is you know plato it's like time is the moving image of eternity and it's like you're you're seeing something and there's like a, I don't know. It's like, there's a deep patience that's yeah. bound up with it and yeah. the, the being willing to wait until, yeah. until you come back around to that same spot and you see it again differently. Yeah. And yeah, in some, in some sense that I, in some sense, that's like, this is Heidegger's one thought. Yeah. <laughs> in some sense, like I just, I'm in the middle of, um, I got this, I've been reading On Inception by Heidegger, which is like, I have read the first five pages, I don't know, seven times. Um, but, and it's, it's, it's a, it recently was published, um, I think just this year. And it's him, him trying to get, and, and there's something so interesting about this, the fact that his work continues to be published after he's dead, right? And earlier works are published later and it keeps, there's something about just, just that in itself that's so telling. <laughs> can, you imagine, can you imagine being Heidegger sitting in your, <laughs> oh, watching God. the process? Oh my gosh, that'd be yeah. so funny. yeah. But in some sense, he's kind of trying to, in, in some sense, he's in this book, especially, he's trying to talk about, I think, if we think about inception as like this, this sense of um, beginning, right? Mm -hmm. um, and he wants to, he wants to, in some sense, thought like, in, in some sense, um, think through, think beyond, think underneath this sense of a kind of a sense of being is this, you know, constant eternity, right? And that, that there's something about time and being that are bound together, right? Mm -hmm. And so how do you talk about these beginnings, right? Which which are totally without a here that begins, right? It's, and so he's trying to, he, in this book, you, you, you see him just start trying to work out this, this inceptive thinking from inception, right? This, you can see what I'm doing with my hands, right? Yeah. And as I'm listening, like my heart, I can feel my heart rate rising, like listen, like listening to that. There's something like, yeah, I, I don't know what it is, but yeah. Totally, totally. So there's this kind of like, you know, I'm curious, what is in your, what is your official job title in what you do? Uh, I'm a, I'm a care provider. So mm -hmm. the, yeah, what I, what I, my official um, boundary of, of my job is that I, um, I provide medications to people mm -hmm. and then the rest of the time is the rest of the time I have in the day, which is, you know, the majority of my shift is yeah. just to be with people. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a really cool job. I'm, this is the best job I've ever had by far. It is very cool. And so you're with people. You said that everyone who's there is really wanting to be there. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not it's like a, it's not like a treatment center. I think where a lot of people will, would imagine a treatment center is like people like it, you know, go to their assigned by the court, like. Oh yeah, no, it's it's okay. it's the opposite of a normal treatment center because the goal yeah. is to like get people off of whatever pharmaceutical medications they were on previously. Yeah. And so it's people coming in like fully expecting that they're going to be going into withdrawals from, you know, like, um, you know, whatever, like psychiatric or non-psychiatric drug that they were on. And, yeah. you know, the, the idea of the place is like, it's, this is a safe place. This is a beautiful place where mm. you can like, you'll have all this medical support to get off of mm. whatever this thing was that's holding you back so that you can be better after you're, after you've gone. And so it's a, it's a really interesting group of people that get to come in and that come through that program because they're not like, like you said, they're not, nobody there is court mandated. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's a lot of sweet, sweet old ladies that are coming in and being like, Hey, my, like my Zyprexa isn't quite working for me anymore. Like, yeah. can you help me get off of it? And, yeah. Or, you know, like these younger people that are like, Hey, my, my doctor kind of screwed me over with this, these five medications. I'd like to get back to being myself. And yeah. So that's definitely the, People huh. are trying to pull back into themselves. They're like re-becoming who they are in this yeah. really cool way. Yeah, it's really admirable. Totally. It's a cool idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can hear I can hear your your admiration of them, which I'm imagining they hear as well, right? Which is I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. I so I can I can I can understand the draw towards you in some ways through that. And I, I also kind of like thinking about that is just, you know, you know, thinking about, okay, so there's these people who are, they're in some dependent relationship, right. With medication, right. Or addicted to some, something. Mm. And so they're coming in wanting to withdraw from that right and in some sense a restoration of themselves or themselves without that and and it's interesting if i think about an addiction right like like or a dependency right it's it's this kind of inverse. It's like interesting because like like I I mean I've definitely I I come from like a whole tradition of addiction. <laughs> I know I've known addiction, and I know all kinds of dependencies and stuff like that. And there's always in every case there's this thing where it's like, you know, at first you have it, and then before you know it, it has you. You belong to it. It no longer belongs to you, right? And so it's got this kind of this being relationship to it right in some way in some sense that like our addictions and our dependencies you know it's because it's always strange with i've noticed with you know usually addicts you know you especially see this with people who are, are like have been sober for a long time or something like that they have this tendency to be quite wise people in some yeah, absolutely yeah in some way right and it's, it's often had me kind of think that there's something about the, 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 whatever it is that, whatever it is that urges, right, that can end up at, in addiction mm-hmm. is also something that urges in the mystic, right, in the, in the, there's an urge there's an it's almost like it's like it's like the difference between like gandhi and the guy on the street right in some way is they're both they're both in some sense driven by the same impulse is just one's at the wrong address one yeah. you know like it, that there's something about the there's something about the craving underneath addiction that seems to be some there's something right about it Mm. yeah i think the like what what immediately comes to mind is like the um like the the old greek fathers you know like saint maximus and gregory of nissa and those guys they yeah they would all say that it's the you you place the wrong thing as as your good 
Yeah. Um, and so it's that it's definitely that same drive, but the, you're being closed in by your addiction because you're not, it's not something that inherently is going to be opening for you or to you. Yeah. It's something that's going to, like, it's, uh, what, what was John called that? Um, reciprocal. It's, it's reciprocal narrowing. It's just reciprocal yeah. opening. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's, <laughs> It's, 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 it's that, that spiral again, yeah. but it, instead of like, once you figure out that you, that you've been spiraling, yeah. you start working on that process of coming back out of it. You start feeling, and maybe that's what it is. Like you're feeling into that same process of coming out of something and that coming out of it opening for you yeah and like seeing yourself emerge oh, in that right. opening. Now I'm seeing both of you walking around. <laughs> around Sedona yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Conversations. <laughs> <laughs> fra- I can't take any more fractals <laughs> leave me alone oh. fractalness yeah for real for yeah. real though <laughs> so so there's this kind of this this it, yeah that's that's right I'm glad you brought that that part up about this um this reciprocal closure, right? That is addiction. That is also the same underlying machinery of reciprocal opening, right? Yeah. And that, that there, yeah, that that's the, that's the, that, that's the, the thing that binds those two things together, right? It's just a matter of direction in some sense, but it's still the same you know, as John often alludes to, the, the very thing that will enlighten you is the very thing that will put you in hell, right? It's the same machine, yeah. right? Like, so the agency in this and the sovereignty in this is, in some sense, you're, you know, your you're, you're people, you're, you're like, it sounds like people are coming there, right? To get a sense of this. It's like people are coming there with 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 a, some kind of talos of agency, right? Mm. Like, the very beginnings of agency, right? Yeah, yeah. And and enter and with the that they they must already have a sense of that, right? Coming into it, yeah. and they need help with it. But this kind of what they're being restored back to, mm-hmm. right? Is is interesting to consider. Yeah, because a really common thing that you hear from people that, you know, are going through the program is that they'll say, like, I'm feeling more like myself every day. And that's a like an explicit goal that most of the people that I go through have is that they're trying to get back to who they were or who they are. Yeah. And for some of the people, you know, they'll like they'll get through that that process early of, you know, they'll they'll taper off of whatever medication that they were on. Yeah. And then like the second half of their stay is just them like being in this environment where they can keep showing up more and more. Right. And, right. and it's, it's been really cool to see guy. Cause like nobody, like I haven't seen a single person go through the program yet. Who's like, who's left worse than they came. Yeah. It's different. There's a, there's a, a degree of success, but yeah, like there's everybody that's left, like they, they, they're smiling more. They're, they're happier. They like talk about being with themselves more. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And that, that's making me start to wonder. It's like, how, like, is me going on these walks and being with them? And it's like, how much of that is me finding myself in, in this process just by being with them? Yeah. Like, like be, being in the presence of somebody that's going through and putting in like this insanely hard work is inherently something that's like, you're, <laughs> it feels yeah. like I'm writing their coattail sometimes. I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's like I'm I'm following along with them as they move into this expansion. Yeah, what like now that you consider that is that is that like would you say that that if we if we pause on that for a moment and look at it like is that would you say in some sense you've your stay there has been a you've been undergoing the very the very process that they've been going through in some sense. I think so. Yeah. I like, yeah. Like look, looking back on it now, it's, it's pretty easy to see that, see that path, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause it, cause it's, it's cause one of the things about, you know, we talk about this, um, 
just this last you know, one of the, in my my company the circling institute we we do these um I, we do a year long the first year long course that we do is the artist circling which is basically you know um training people to facilitate and and each weekend is like um takes a a particular stage of circling and the first stage is sovereignty and the second stage is is what we call the explorer which is all the stuff about listening um it's all this it's all the stuff about deeply getting another's world you know all those things and somehow in this last weekend it it just came to the floor about how so much of listening right is happens when you is is it simultaneously happens in the recognition that you haven't listened right like it, it, there's something about it's it's um it's something that seems to be inherent in the structure of listening that involves having not listened and mm. and once i hear that i once i can hear that i'm i hadn't heard is the is is the the precise moment where listening begins and on one level, you could look at that as like, you know, listening as such, right? Like, period. I'll, I walk along and I think I'm having conversations and I, when I'm listening, I always think I'm listening, right? But then all of a sudden, like, I somehow hear that I don't listen. In fact, I've never listened, <laughs> right? This whole time I've thought I've been listening. I haven't, all I've been listening to is all my pre-listenings and then, but hearing that is the moment listening begins and opens up because you can somehow hear your own hearing, right? You hear listening as such. So there's a meta way where it's like there's this big opening where listening itself actually begins for somebody. But then I think that's also the case in almost every moment where you hear. There's always this mm -hmm. kind of breaking, yeah. right? Like you simultaneously hear something you hadn't heard, but you also hear that you hadn't heard it. Mm. There's some kind of breaking in this, right? Yeah, like what's coming to mind is like my my favorite koan, like Zen koan, is the the master who who just who points. Yeah, and it's, the whole point is that it's it's not his pointing. Yes, his pointing is pointing to everything except for the pointing. Yes, yes. And like once, like once that clicks, like you, like you get this, this explosion of like, oh, it's not the finger. It's, whoa, it's, it's existence. It's being, it's, yeah, it's all of these other things that aren't the one thing that you were, that you were looking at. Yeah. And then you're in this new realm yes. where you get a, you get all this new space to play and you do this and you keep doing the same thing until you realize that that new realm itself is just like a tiny bubble in this other bigger thing. Right. And yeah, there's something about it's that's that same fractal that keeps going. And yeah, yeah, and I'm wondering about just that sense of because I, I I think what I'm hearing is your your um this whole venture of did you move to Sedona to to do this job? Uh, no. So my uh, my wife she's uh, going to school here in Flagstaff at NAU. And so okay. I commute back and forth from Sedona to Flagstaff. Okay, got you. Oh, so you do the whole drive through, through um, Canyon Creek. Is it is that the name of the word? Canyon Creek. Uh, Canyon? Oak Creek. Oak Creek. Oak Creek. Oak Creek. Oak Creek. Yeah, I love that drive. It is. It's so beautiful. It's like it's one of the few drives that I take where like if, <laughs> like I get a little bit of road rage sometimes, but like it's the hardest road to get road rage on because if somebody's driving slow, it's like oh they're driving slow because of because of this. Yeah, and then you get to enjoy the drive with them on the way down. <laughs> totally, totally. You get that's your that's your morning drive to work. That's amazing. That's really really that's really amazing. I find yeah. I find Flagstaff a bit strange. Do you, there's something I don't know what it is about Flagstaff. I, it, there's something. There's something. Um, it's there. Is. Uh, I don't know. I find I find Flagstaff's thereness kind of missing. <laughs> like I can't mm. quite. All the times I've been to Sat it's Flagstaff, I can't. I've never quite been able to get a real sense of Flagstaff. Do you yeah. Find that? yeah. 
yeah, I had to I I had to leave home for a while to like come back to it, and yeah, now that I'm <laughs> so weird they say that because like that's definitely like Sedona has such like a strong thereness. It's like oh, you're in Sedona. Yeah, you yeah. Know, there's the Red Rock everywhere. There's all the there's all the you know the hippies and the the crystal yeah. pushers and you know yeah. those those types of folk. And yeah. you know there's Sedona has its 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 itsness, but then Flagstaff, it's like you have all these uh, you know. There's like, there's like the college students and then there's the, the vacation homers and then the, yeah. the suburban rednecks and, <laughs> you know, the, yeah. and the, all yeah. the endless pine trees. And then the peak, it, it, first of all, Flagstaff, no one thinks of Flagstaff when they think of Arizona, like, they're like, oh what? yeah, people yeah. go, there's pines in Arizona. Like there's snow there. You can ski in Arizona. Like that. No, <laughs> no one thinks, yeah, thinks Flagstaff, right. So other to Arizona somehow. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the it's like the wrong it's it belongs in a different state, but yeah. it's in Arizona still. And so yeah, that's I'm gonna be thinking about that one for yeah, a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I used to play all of my pop war like a bunch of pop warner games when I because I grew I, I I moved from Chicago to Cottonwood, Arizona when I was when I was twelve. And so I and I basically, you know, was in that area for um until I moved to San Francisco, I think when I was 22, I think. So I've like, um, I'm very familiar with, with all of that. And I, we would, we would have a lot of my pop Warner football games up at, at the dome, like, uh, at, at, um, Northern, Northern Arizona university. And every time I'd go there, I'd just be like, what is it about this place? <laughs> like I can, so I would notice I was like, I couldn't even remember it. Like it, 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 I, it, there's something unrepresentable about it, you know, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, there, there, there's more there, and I'm gonna have to. I don't know. I, I, I was born and raised here, and so it's oh, it's hard to. This is this is yeah. so you were born out of Flagstaff. Yeah, yeah, born here, and then uh, yeah, been spent almost my entire life here, and so. Wow. Um, Yeah, you, like that, like what, whatever you just said, like you, you gave me a little piece of a, of a puzzle that I was that I was building, and I'm not sure quite what that's going to do to the rest of the puzzle now. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll keep me posted. Absolutely, guy. Absolutely, <laughs> keep me posted. So you do this drive. So it's interesting. So you do this this descent from Flagstaff every morning into this job, right? That has essentially what you're what it's a job that's not obviously you know it, it's not just a transactional thing at all but it's something you've been dwelling in and it's you've you mm. taking it up and and it's taking you up and in some sense mm. you've been in the very process that the people who go there are in and mm. in being there repeatedly with a number of people right on the same walk right in some sense like you're um something about the process itself right is 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 um taking you up in it right and that's just i just think that that's to use an ancient greek term that's just rad <laughs> 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 I couldn't agree more with you guy. It's yeah, it's been it has been rad. <laughs> it's been fucking, it's fucking, fucking rad, right? To, to bring in some Latin. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, like I guess like there's like one question that's like that's left with it though. And it's like Yeah. Like I don't know, like like talking to you feels like I'm talking to it almost feels like I'm talking to an older version of myself in some ways. Hmm. Like like you like you lived in the same you lived in the same area and you like you found you found yourself inside a circling and then yeah. you you pushed through and you you developed that. Yeah. And you know, like even like other things, it's like I heard you say that you like you did bodybuilding for a long time. Yeah. And that's something that, like, that I've I've been in for like the last five years. And there hmm. is this like like the way that you talk about reading, yeah. Like how do you read? Like I've been finding that to be so true. Like it can take me 
months to get through a book. Yeah. Whereas like there was a, a point in my life I could, I could fly through like 300 pages in a day. And now it's like 10 pages can seem like a lot. And yeah. Um, I don't know. It's like, there's this, this listening that, that I feel from you. And that's, it feels like the same listening that, that I've been finding in myself. And I'm wondering like, what's the, like, where does that go? Like, what's the, like, what's the limit of that? Like, where's the, not the limit. That's the, that's yeah. the wrong word for sure. But yeah. Where, where does that go? Yeah. Where do you find yourself? Yeah. God, well, just, you know, carrying around all this youth this long, right. It's definitely, it's, it's definitely maturing me and aging me. <laughs> <laughs> the um the God, where does this go that's a really good question i mean in some sense it's like i would say in 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 some sense it's i think where it goes is this kind of um There's a deep is it is a deeper tolerance, right, for um sustaining something like this in betweenness, right? Like this because in some sense you're like in some sense it feels it feels to me, it feels to me this kind of this sense we we're talking about, this overhearing of this thing, right? Like mm -hmm. like you look at it and it and it goes around, right? Like it's like you know, this thing about like, you know, hey, guy, what's that thing behind your head? I'm like, what what thing? <laughs> right. Like, it's, how do you like trying to find you, 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 you can somehow this whole this thing is constituting your whole world. Everybody's responding to it. Right. But like they point to it and like you you just act like you know what it is. But it's this this thing that's unseeable. Right. In some way. But yet you can hear it. Right. And I. There's something about that thing that, at least in my experience, keeps drawing me beyond my own categories, and mm -hmm. and I think that the, I think in one sense it's, it's, in one sense it draws it it, it induces this aporia, right, but, but this kind of tolerance for aporia. Right. And actually like an, a kind of a, a, I would even say an attraction towards what is beyond my current, my current capacities to categorize. It's like, mm -hmm. and there's always something in me that wants to like fucking nail it for once. Right. Like, like, let's just, let's just, let's just fucking pound this thing into the ground and just be fucking certain about something for once <laughs> in my goddamn life. Right. It's like, like, but it's, <laughs> But it's the thing kind of goes and like what is you know and and something about this that being more and more beckoning more and more callful more and more um both illuminating and 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 ever receding and def definability right that right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so appropriate Something about that is just so appropriate. Yeah, that's what it's like. It's like <laughs> <laughs> this thing crawling right around the edges or something. Um, but I'd have to say that like it's it really does feel like you said you said something earlier about you used the term like a self-emptying. Um mm -hmm. there's something about that 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 rings like you know, there's something about that that rings, and and it, and I would say also there's in some strange way too. It's like um, I've been noticing, and I think I've been noticing this in my resistance to it actually. Um, this simplicity is is. Feet, let's see if I can put words to it. It's like it, it's a simplicity that feels like it's starting to take hold. And in some mm -hmm. sense, one would call, I think somebody would call it like becoming more conservative. Mm. 
Um, but that that word conservative, although it's there's something about that that's like kind of true. It doesn't feel like my what I consider as conservative. Um, it feels more like there's this drawing towards this between of categories or this other than the, than categorization, which is has this sense of almost some kind of opposite of being conservative, right? Like, and yet at the same mean? time, in terms of the way I live my life, right? And I think this probably has a lot to do with having, you know, having, a, you know, starting a family for the second time, right? So I have a two-year-old, right? So there's, you know, there's the, having children, I mean, it just inherently, you know, normativity and repetition is everything that they need, right? So there's just something about that that's just inherently conser conservative, Um but in a deeper way, though, there's a, some, there's some connection between that and this that I don't quite understand. Um, that has to do with kind of a self emptying uh, in mm -hmm. some way. And um, yeah. yeah, that's the current. That's the that's the current. Um, that's my that's my current um, not completely satisfying way of answering your question no it's <laughs> i hear like i hear my own thoughts and in, in in what you're saying and it's 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 relieving in one sense it's like okay you're there you're there too yeah it's the same it's the same thing in some sense but on the other hand it's like the that like like you said like you just want to like you want to put in that nail you want that to have that one thing you can kind of start to structure off of and you, i yeah. have you haven't been able to find it yeah i haven't been able to find it yeah. And I don't know, is there like a, like with that, that emptying yeah. and the always like, like spending so much of your time, like listening to other people into like and facilitating others listening and going through and then listening to yourself in your off time. Like, mm -hmm. is there like, do you get like a, a specific kind of like fatigue associated with that? Or did you at some point? Oh, oh, um, <clears throat> yeah 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 it's it's the so one of the i think one of the things that i've personally particularly have struggled with like throughout my whole life right and I think this probably has a lot to do with like um, some of this has just to do with genetics. Like it has to do with constitution it has to do with like, you know, having, you know, you know, drug addicted parents and all, all, all of, all of that and the genetics of that. And yeah, that, I mean, struggling with moods and, and phases of just being hit by, periods of time where like all interest withdrawals right mm, yeah and and it's interesting because there's something about that happening for me that when it returns like when i go through a period of like just kind of deep withdrawal it's like there's nothing more painful that for me for when i look out and there, my interest is nowhere to be found right mm. But but then there's this kind of when I'm be walking along and all of a sudden I'll just catch myself having a thought and then I'll be start thinking about that thought and then I'll get something about like and then, and then all of a sudden I'll like be like oh there I am I remember mm -hmm. myself <laughs> I remember I'm like this feels like I'm there when that's happening when the world when when the world gleams out and draws me into it and that interest that horizon of interest and that sense of wonder when it animates like that like that's that's when i feel like me and mm, yeah. and but there seems to be something about that that also requires this withdrawing of it right mm -hmm. in these periods of like really frustrating and kind of almost depressive 
senses of vagueness and like absence, like, you know, like I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about somehow, you know, the way Demeter is like sucked in by Hades and yeah. like they do this negotiation with winter, these winters. Right. And I have to say, like, I mean, maybe, maybe at some point I'll get more and more okay with those things, but I just fucking hate those things. I can't stand yeah. them, right? Like to be within them, but it's been a signature of my life, right? Of going, you know, back and back and forth between these, these, these incredible experiences of deep, inexhaustible fertility, right? Of, mm -hmm. Yeah. of an endless amount of where the mystery just kind of shines and draws me into it and creativity. And then there's some, something that seems to be inherent in that, that also belongs with it. The, the concealment where everything shuts down where everything kind of withdraws and no matter what way I think about it or turn my head or like what fucking supplements I take or like angle, I look at something like, I just can't feel, I just can't feel it. Right. Yeah. That, that relationship and going be, between the two of those, it, I think there's something about that as I get older in that's, there's some mediation going on there for me, I think right now, like, I don't know. In fact, this is the first time I'm quite artic trying to articulate it like that, but there's some, there's some way where those, reconciling those two things or realizing the way that they're reconciling the, I can feel some sense of something about that. I'm heading, I'm heading in that direction. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. My, <laughs> I have that exact same thing. I call it like, I call it my ups and downs. I'm sure a therapist would call it something else. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I know like at least genetically, like my, my biological dad and my grandfather and like his like his father like going back as far as like we've been able to find records of like yeah. all talked about like that same that same wave process that yeah. like the like on the ups you feel you, you feel great and then on the lows like you there's that, that apathy that depression that comes in and sets with it and yeah yeah there's like like there's that that fatigue at the bottom and yeah. like what's been something about this job that's been interesting has been that like like even like while I've been at the bottom of it, like you're still surrounded by so much stuff that's beautiful. Like yeah. You're watching people's, you know, they're like these valiant struggles and these efforts that people are putting in, and like you're, you know, you're seeing the red rocks every day, and you like I get I go stargazing, and then you know I get to come home and be with my wife, and there's so much beautiful, like so much that's beautiful everywhere, but there's like, like a fatigue that comes with the beauty after a certain point. Yeah. It's like I almost like want to like talk to God and be like, I, I'm okay for a little bit. Like, I'm yeah. like, I, I don't know if I can do much more of, of yeah. this beauty, right? Now. It's like, it's, it's beyond my limits. I can't, totally. I can't handle much more of it. Totally. But then eventually, like, you know, when you're, when you're coming back up, it's like you, like, there's nothing you want more than to like go deeper into that beauty. And yeah. Yeah. Like what you said about the, the concealment and the unconcealment of that, yeah. that feels, that feels really right where it's, yeah it's all part of the same thing. There's like some kind of through line yeah. of all of it. Yeah. And, and there is this, there is this sense of like the, you know, the fatiguing is really, it's, it's, it is, a, it's an interesting fatiguing because in some sense, what we're talking about is like, you're, I mean, in some sense we're talking about glass and height, right? We're talking about this kind of way, this way of, um, this way of comporting, right? The way, this way of, it's a letting be right like it's not a figuring out it's not getting clear it's like the, there's we're, we're talking about in some sense our our occupation is this um you know in some sense it's a de demand is a little bit too well it can't actually be quite demanding there's something very demanding about that right yeah and it's a it's a fit, it's interesting to think about like you know you know, when you work out, which, which it's interesting to hear you talking about bo bodybuilding. Cause I, I would have to say that like, um, there's something going on in lifting weights for me that has just been the, I, I, in fact, in fact, like almost, almost above and beyond anything 
Because I started lifting weights when I was, I first started when I was when I was um, eleven, and then, Whoa. and then, and then my dad quit going, and I kept bothering him and, about it. And so he got me this like really neurotic trainer that would call the cops if I didn't show up and report me missing. And and like <laughs> somewhere in there, I got comp I, I I crossed some threshold. I actually remember this kind of moment where, you know. It was this key, this key moment where I was like, um, this is in Cotton when they used to have, um, they just had this little Parks and Rec gym. It was the only thing, it was the only place in town at that time. It was in the basement and it was like musky and, and I'm down there and I'm like, you know, I'm 12 and I'm doing curls <laughs> and, you know, I'm doing this hard thing on purpose, which was just so weird to me at the time. Like, why would anybody do anything that was painful on purpose, right? It was such a foreign idea. And it was like a couple of weeks after doing this, where I like, I was doing curls and I looked in the, in, in the mirror and I saw that there was a, there was a bicep there that wasn't there. The, like the, the last time I had looked and there was something about, my eyes recognizing that that bump, which of course, you know, just coming into puberty, you know, like the fact that you could change your body yeah. and that burn that I was hating at that time, it completely transformed it. I was like something in me connected that burn to this kind of empowering sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. It linked it. And I've been like that link, I think on some level, if I didn't have that, I don't know if I'd be alive. Right. Because mm -hmm. yeah. that sustained, I like, I have been lifting weights and working out since then, with the, the exception there was one year in the middle, right? Where after my divorce, where I, I, I didn't. But that, other than that, I've been consistently doing that. And there's something about lifting weights in, in what we're talking about that mm -hmm. is deeply there's some, there's something about the simplicity of that activity and the kind of in, you know continuous like recreation of death that you do mm -hmm. when you go to the gym right is there something about this kind of going to exhaustion or going to fatigue in this kind of heavy weighted way that like seems crucial to being able to like somehow yeah listen to the subtleties and mind them. Like there's something about that, the connection between those two that uh, is important. It has been, I think for me. Yeah. And then like, what, like what immediately came to mind with that was like the, you know, there's the, like you'll occasionally get injured, like, like lift, like lifting something that was too heavy for you or, you know, like your shoulder twinges in just the wrong way. And then, you know, you're out for a little while. Yeah. And there was, there's like a long period of time I had where like, every time that would happen, like I would, I would nurse it and I would milk it. And, you know, you let everybody know it's like, Oh, I, I, I tweaked my back. Cause I was lifting, I was yeah. deadlifting so much weight. And, you know, there's like, there's like a definite beauty in that. Yeah. Like, in letting people know that you've been struggling. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. Like I, I've been pushing myself. It's like, you're like searching for pride in yeah. it, even in like the worst points. Yeah. But like, like ah, there, there was this moment like about a year ago where I was, I was getting into to powerlifting really intensely. And I was going every day for like, like two or three hours. And like, there was, there was one day I hit uh, a five plate deadlift and I, I, I finally did it after, you know, like, like months and months and months of training and just going really hard. And I remember like I put the, like I dropped it and all of the guys in the powerlifting gym, they were, you know, like they were, like they, they knew that I was, it was a goal of mine. And so they were super, they were super nice about it. They were like congratulating yeah. and doing all of it. And there was like, like a thought that popped into my mind right then was like the, like the, the beauty of triumph is greater than the beauty of, of the pain yeah. or of the failure. Yeah. And there's like, there's yeah. something in that. Yeah. That's like, it goes back into like that walking around and that, that circling with other people where yeah. the, Whoa, this is this is so interesting to see how these kind of Come kind of talk to each other. But yeah. Um yeah, there's this this cool sense in which like they're like I feel like a lot of people that come through that that center, like they there's like a pride that people take in the fact that they've suffered so much, that yeah. they've been through so much and like they're they're still here. Yeah. But then they get they get locked into that 
Yeah. And, but being with them Mm. and I don't know, like maybe like subconsciously encouraging them to like look away from that and to look towards Mm. their successes and to like keep pushing towards the higher success Yeah, is like, there's something in that that's, it's, it's expansive and it's not, it's not contractive and (laughs) <laughs> and and we're back <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. And yeah totally and there's something about when you're yeah when you're deadlifting or pen, like bench pressing it's like on some level like if you go if you look at that kind of rationally and you look at it stand outside of you go like what the fuck are they doing yeah. <laughs> it's like like, <laughs> like this but there is this there is this kind of yeah there is this sense of of um a certain kind of of going to failure going to death but because it's of your volition you're 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 turning towards it in the most radical simplest way right lifting heavy weights over over my head yeah. right like right so, because something's calling to you there but there's a there's this threshold of a death and a releasement mm-hmm. at the end of it i usually call that like I love that probably the whole reason why I lift weights is because for the stupids, I love the stupids. Like, you know, your fifth, you know, my fifth set of bench press and like, you know, and maybe, you know, super, you know, like do a super set with flies or something. And you're just like done. And it's like, it's like, I call call it dumb guys enlightenment. (laughs) It's like, you just get the stupid. It is this moment of release, right? Of which I think must be something like this death, right? This, this, this sim. There's, there's a symbol in it. That's what it is. I think that I think this is what we're talking about. Is that there's something about there's something about, and I would imagine this whole sense of, you know, this confronting there's a surrendering in it there's a facing death there's there's also a what even draws all that to even come into being is a horizon that goes beyond all of that but the surrender that you have to go through and then this this releasement right this release from it right that seems to just give you a sense of that um the sense of that that interest that that space right of that seems somehow yeah you're right there's something there's there's something about like that that glimmer of the horizon and of course a horizon is a really interesting way to think about it because a horizon in some senses is substantiates a both a a beginning and a limit right Mm. and you can't ever reach it but it's what gives the ground right like so there's this it could, because it always, but it, but it always speaks beyond itself. But you can't ever get to that beyond. But somehow that not gives this is called the ground, right? There's so there's this this hermeneutic kind of thing walking. I love thinking about horizons. I've gotten. I used to get. I used to get. I used to get. Um, take mushrooms with my friends, and we would talk about horizons for fucking eight hours. I've never been able to, we tried to hit the end of them. We'd never be able to hit the end of them. Right. Um, we kept walking towards it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Like there's something so, so familiar about that, mm. but I want to get, I just want to get back to this kind of fatigue because you're highlighting something, you're bringing something there that like has me actually kind of realize like, yeah, there is something I've been reckoning with about this fatigue. And I think that there's something really wise in it, right? And pointing, yeah. right? Pointing to something, right? That um, is really imp- is really important to all of this, like, like this, this, um, because it is it is really strange, like, because the self emptying is in some sense it's a non activity, right? like it's a it's this thing that you're that you're doing 
then you're not even doing it. It's this thing that you're participating in, I would say, right? As you're talking, as you're walking, as you're doing activities, right? Yet there's this thing, there's, a, there's this kind of thing that's coming forward that's demanding a room making in you. And this kind of room making that has you be able to maybe overhear the thing drawing that in and it's withdrawing and catching it. There's something about all of that that is doing something to whatever whatever the self is, right? That is can be deeply exhausting. Yeah. But I don't you know see, exactly what organ gets exhausted exactly. <laughs> yeah, could you could you say more about the room making that like really that really yeah. lit something up? Yeah. It's a term, it's a term I heard from um uh Corey Anton, who is somebody, he has a YouTube channel. Um in I, I just had a conversation with him on my channel um a couple weeks ago. But he talks about that, that that in some sense the 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 human being is this kind of room making, right? Um for for world, right? Like uh, it's a room making that kind of in some sense, you know, in in Heidegger terminology affords the the self-concealment of earth to to decompress into world, right? We are this clearing, this all these kind of get at this sense of not ourselves as a something right then 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 opens but that we are an yeah. openness at such that discloses the world right so there's something about like there's something about there's something right about this exhaustion and something telling about the thing i think that we're pointing to that i i'm gonna i'm gonna be i can tell i'm gonna be thinking about for a while yeah and it the, whatever that that room that that image is is so powerful because it's like mm. <laughs> i don't know about you but like when like when somebody comes up even if it's like the like the third time this has happened in the same day like and i'm already like it could be like a day i'm already tired and you know like i like i had a, a rough a rough day the day before or whatever yeah. and like i didn't sleep at all and then i'll get to work and there'll be four people that need that need yeah somebody to talk to. they need somebody there yeah and it it's not like it, it's it doesn't feel like an option that you have to be like hey, you know what i think i'm gonna have today to myself yeah but like you like you go and you be there and like the that, that room it it opens yeah for yeah you. and it's and it's energizing in that moment always yeah, yeah. but then like, you sit down and you're like you're absolutely spent even though like like you, you find more of yourself yeah inside of it yeah it's, it's in some sense it's the easiest thing in the world but in another sense it's it's the hardest thing you could do is yeah. just it's just being there with them yeah for however long that they need yeah and then like especially like if you're like at the bottom of one of those those long lows yeah. it's like it, it takes everything but it's yeah. It's like the most worthwhile thing you could ever do. And it always shows up. Right. Right. But it's like it it drains you, but in a way that's not yeah. Like not ugly. I appreciate that threshold that you're talking about. Like going to work and like you're fatigued and trashed or whatever. And like, and then you got four people. And then there's something, there's something necessitating, right? Mm -hmm like there's something that necessitates your own opening into and it, you're right there's a if you really can if you can really there is some effort of like will right to bring your attention to that place and that if you keep your if you can kind of keep your attention there something catches right yeah and it starts it takes you up right and and then when you come back like, yeah, there is something that's restorative, especially in, if you're in a real low, because if you've gone a while without like being outside of that lull, that could remind you that there's something other than that lull, right? That can be rejuvenating. But when it puts you back, yeah, there is, it took something to do that. Mm -hmm. That's, that's really hard to describe exactly what gets what gets tired exactly what is the what what muscle gets fatigued exactly is it <laughs> what's the organ that's overused 
What is that? <laughs> yep, kids. Oh, this is so because like going back to the like the like you're left you, if you're lifting weights and you know you're doing like like you said you're doing curls yeah. at a certain point like you, you know the like you're you, mentally you could be a hundred percent there and you could do a hundred more but the yeah. bicep at some point just gives out yeah yeah with this it's it's not the same because every time you require another rep yeah it's there's always energy to do more yeah yeah but the like that whatever that tiredness is it, it sets in totally totally well i think it's like something like you know i think it you know what it is is i think it's something like at first we I mean, just think about the act of like paying attention or listening you know at first it's like i actually have to move i have to take hold i have to take up something right and move my attention to whatever it's on onto you and at yeah. first there's like my attention is something like i have to i have to point it at you right and i have to keep it there and so i'm 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 listening to you right yeah and at some point this kind of back and forth thing happens and then listening stops becoming i think this thing that i listen to you to listening being something we're participating in mm. and in an even deeper level like that listening kind of gets the sense where where a it, it, it kind of it inverses to where it's like, it's not something that's in me that I'm giving to you. It's something that's that we're, we're in, right. That's giving us in some way. And, mm, yeah. and I think that there's something about like that. I want to say, I want to say that that, that we, re we, we, we realize ourselves finding ourselves in participating in listening right and you get to that point where it's like somehow the one the ones who are conversing are are no longer they're they're they belong to that listening and that listening belonging to that listening is 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 kind of some kind of the, yeah that's the memory that's the that's the 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 awakening of animesis, right? Like this kind of remembering, like oh yeah, and so it, and it's that sense of like somehow oh that that actually I've been oriented to that that this whole time, right? Yeah. Like it's not like it's there and not there, like an object. That there's something there's something constituting. Right, all of these objects. That's the, it's the gap. I, 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 perhaps it's something to do with logos, right? Like this kind of gathering together, belonging together. But there's that, yeah. And that's, I think, I think that's something like this. If we say room making, there's something in there, right, about this, this place where it catches, right, and then we recognize that we're we've already always already been inside of something, and the um the other word is and in, in this is in this in this book he keeps using this word this the sense of sufficiency right like and in some way that's in the fatigue in the fatiguing i think i would have to say that that like the thing that kind of gets concealed, right? Like in the fatiguing is that that sense of sufficiency that sustains something, appropriates something, keeps it keeps it into existence. That somehow goes. In some sense, it's like that 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 fatigue is is like the net. It's like the negative photograph of the mm. of the other thing. It's like a. It's it there's something deeply related between the two that mm. is really compelling. But my friend, we've been talking for uh, like time just disappeared. It grabbed hold of us. This is really good talking with you. It was great talking to you too, guy. I really appreciated this. Yeah, yeah totally. This is... Let's talk, let's do it. Let's do this. Let's talk again. I want to talk. I also talk. You, you were the one that also was, had written to me about this, practice this um geometric 
that you're working with that you with, yeah. with John and, and, and Chris, this, this kind of way of dialoguing with like something to do with ge uh, geometry. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, we got to talk about yeah. that at this point, at some point, but I actually, I have to get going. All righty. For now. Yeah. Let's definitely do that. I'd really love to do that. Yeah. Awesome. Really nice meeting you, my friend. It was great to meet you too again, guy. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs>